I'm Art Weirs. I've served as a pastor in the Reformed Church for 36 years. It's been my privilege to serve in many roles, uh, serving in three congregations as a called installed pastor, as a specialized transition pastor in four different congregations, and now working to serve an entire region with about 200 churches. Uh, in the midst of that, all along that journey, up until very recently, nobody ever discussed with me or said anything to me about the matter of succession planning. Uh, as I have a real passion and concern for churches that go through transitions, one of the things I've been working on recently with our transition ministry team is the value of succession planning, especially for those churches and pastors who are serving a long tenured situation. By long tenured, I'd say 10 to 15 years or more, and especially as they're approaching retirement age. Usually this discussion is avoided, uh, and that I believe is really unfortunate, both for the pastor uh, and for the ministry. I have a, a colleague and friend who has now joined our team as a succession planning specialist. He put 38 years in one congregation. In the last five years, he's been working at a succession plan, which is now in place and will begin, his successor will begin this fall. Uh, it's a great story. It's a very inspiring matter to see a very mature leader demonstrate what it means to hand off the baton uh, in a healthy ministry to the next leader so that there's really no break uh, in uh, leadership in the church whatsoever. There are many, many things that you could look at in succession planning. I just mentioned three questions here uh, in this short presentation. The first is, I think any pastor with long tenure, along with the board that that pastor is working with, needs to ask the question, whose church is it? I think one of the challenges when you serve in a church more than 10 or 15 years, whether you state it or not, you start thinking or acting like it's yours. And we need to remember, it's not mine. It never was, it never will be, and it doesn't matter how long I've served it. It's not my church. And if I can have that understanding to, to let that go, then I can begin to interact in the conversations that can be so helpful as to what would my successor look like and what would that mean for this church and ask a lot more really healthy uh, questions that would generate more energy in the ministry instead of everybody worrying about, well, when is this person leaving and what does that mean? And so it, it starts to eliminate a lot of unnecessary uncertainty and allow for expressions from leadership that are healthy. The next question is time to leave. So when is the right time to leave? We ought to talk about that. Uh, when is my effectiveness running out and what does it mean to hand off at the right time? Those are healthy conversations, uh, both for the people that, that are responsible in the boardroom, but also for the lead pastor himself or herself. And the pastors that I've seen willing to do this have experienced a lot of joy and fulfillment in actually doing this, but it takes courage, and it often takes some encouragement to get there. The last question for today that I would bring up is, then what are we really looking for in the next leader? And to have the input of the pastor who is in place is actually very valuable. And if you don't do succession planning, you almost always lose that input. Uh, as I've dealt with my friend uh, Don Poost, who is going through this right now, as a pastor who's been in place for 38 years, which for me is just amazing uh, to have a healthy growing uh, ministry that many years under one leader, and then to do the healthy handoff. One of, he would tell you uh, that one of the most important things uh, that he got to do in the midst of that is speak into this with his leaders. What would we really look for in the next leader? And the reality is probably somebody different than me because there's going to be another chapter in this ministry. It's a very exciting area of ministry. We look forward to helping churches uh, uh, in, in that uh, arena where they're beginning to explore that and we'd love to come alongside churches and help them, especially with someone that's been through it and has the skills and specializes in this area. And so I'm excited about it and trust 
that many more churches and many more pastors will have these conversations.